So, Marcus, glad to see you're back. Snake, finally. There you are. Kept you waiting, huh? Enough about Big Boss. Ready to talk about me? I think so, Snake. But I still have one question. Do you think love can bloom even on a battlefield? What? How should I know? This is the leaderboard. I thought you had all the facts. Uh, you'll just have to finish the Metal Gear timeline to find out. Snake? Snake? Oh. I guess he's gone. So we've already talked about the life and times of one of the franchise's central characters, Big Boss. Now, it's time to shift our focus to the first and even more iconic Metal Gear protagonist, Solid Snake. Post Snake Eater and Les Enfants Terribles, 1970s. To understand Solid Snake, we need to go back in time a bit, significantly before the famous stealth suit in CQC. Snake, whose real name is David, came to be because of the Patriots and the Les Enfants Terribles project. To preserve the tactical mind and physical excellence of his old colleague, Big Boss, Zero secretly clones him, with Eva serving as surrogate mother. In 1972, she gives birth to the twin brothers Liquid Snake and Solid Snake. Liquid bears all of Big Boss's dominant genes and Solid all his recessive genes. Because both are considered to be imperfect, a third genetically identical clone of Big Boss is created named Solidus Snake. All three clones are given accelerated aging genes to prevent them from being used by anyone else and from rebelling against the Patriots. Big Boss is understandably furious when he learns that clones of him have been created without his consent. Feeling like Zero and Eva had mutated the original boss's ideals, he leaves the Patriots that same year. Solid Snake, or David, is raised by different foster families throughout the United States. He joins the military as a teen, becomes a Green Beret, and eventually joins Big Boss's Special Forces unit, Foxhound. Big Boss, knowing David's true identity as one of his clone sons, officially dubs him Solid Snake. He personally trains him in CQC, teaching him the importance of willpower on the battlefield. Solid Snake also meets Cos Miller during this time, but he addresses him as Master Miller. Outer Heaven Uprising, 1995. By the 1990s, Outer Heaven is flourishing in South Africa, and the real Big Boss's reputation as a soldier spans the globe because of Venom Snake acting on his behalf. Big Boss knows that mercenaries would rally to his cause and that such attention would lead to governments becoming suspicious of Outer Heaven. To keep attention away from the military nation, Big Boss returns to the US as commander of Foxhound. In 1995, Venom Snake orchestrates the Outer Heaven Uprising, he forces a scientist named Drago Petrovich Madnar to build Metal Gear TX-55 by holding his daughter, Ellen, hostage. The US government catches wind of the plan to build the weapon and called on the Foxhound Special Forces unit under Big Boss's command to infiltrate the fortress and neutralize the threat. Foxhound initiates Operation Intrude N-312, which is carried out by an operative named Frank Yeager, codenamed Gray Fox. Gray Fox scouts a significant amount of the fortress and uncovers some information about Metal Gear, but can only relay a small amount of information back to Foxhound before he's eventually captured. To complete the unfulfilled objectives of the original N-312 mission, Foxhound conducts Operation N-313. Now, rookie agent Solid Snake gets to test his skills in his first assignment for the organization. Big Boss briefs Snake on his mission objective, rescue Gray Fox and secure the rest of his information. Snake infiltrates Outer Heaven via an underwater route and locates Gray Fox using intel from the prisoners and resistance leader Kyle Schneider. Snake allows himself to be captured and, using Big Boss's advice, breaks through a weakened wall to get to Fox's cell next door. Fox briefs him about Metal Gear and how to find the only person who could destroy it, Dr. Madnar. From there, Snake fights the major players at Outer Heaven, including Shopmaker, Machine Gun Kid, and Fire Trooper. All the while, Snake gets occasional advice and tips from Big Boss via radio communication. Solid Snake is able to find and destroy Metal Gear, but during his escape, he comes face to face with the leader of Outer Heaven, Big Boss. You know, the fake Big Boss who is actually Venom Snake. He tells Snake that he's only been sent in to gather false intel, but because he'd achieved and seen so much, Snake actually crushed Boss's original ambitions. After a ruthless battle against his mentor, or so Snake thinks, Snake is ultimately victorious. He escapes Outer Heaven before it self-destructs, and Operation N-313 is deemed a success. Of course, the real Big Boss survives and continues to pursue his dream of a nation governed by soldiers. Zanzibar Land Disturbance, 1997 to 1999. In 1997, Big Boss and his army participate in the Mercenary War. As a result, the formerly autonomous USSR zone called the Zanzibar Province becomes Zanzibar Land, and Big Boss becomes its president. Within Zanzibar Land, Big Boss recruits war orphans from third world nations and raises them as soldiers. Many of these children grow up to view Big Boss as a father figure. Big Boss also recruits the still alive Gray Fox to his cause and commissions the creation of Metal Gear D to ensure the success and survival of Zanzibar Land. Because he'd been slandered as a madman in the United States, Dr. Drago Madnar willingly builds the new Metal Gear. By 1999, the Cold War has begun to thaw. 
but oil reserves around the world are critically low. To combat this energy crisis, a Czech scientist named Dr. Keo Marv successfully creates a new energy producing form of algae called Oilix. Unfortunately, he's kidnapped by soldiers from the heavily fortified and landlocked nation Zanzibar land. To rescue Dr. Marv, Foxhound's new commander, Roy Campbell, brings Solid Snake out of retirement for a covert mission called Operation Intrude F014. Solid Snake fights off the numerous mercenaries sent after him, including the old Outer Heaven Resistance leader, Kyle Schneider, now known as Black Ninja. Out of respect to Solid Snake, he hints at Dr. Marv's location, claiming that it was what the leader of Zanzibar Land would have wanted. Despite Big Boss's attempts to thwart him, Solid Snake destroys Metal Gear D and defeats his old ally, Gray Fox, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In their final confrontation, Big Boss appeals to Snake as a fellow warrior, reminding him that Snake craved the perpetual warfare that he was trying to make. Big Boss has spent his whole life on the battlefield and really couldn't imagine a world without war. He said that even the best soldiers were useless without a war to fight. Like all good heroes do, Snake defies Big Boss, and so Big Boss gives him his final words. It doesn't matter who wins here, our fight will continue. The loser will be liberated from the battlefield and the winner will remain, and the survivor will live out the rest of his days as a soldier. Snake battles the real Big Boss, and as you would expect from the legendary soldier, Big Boss nearly wins. But Solid Snake finally claims victory by creating a makeshift flamethrower, engulfing his former mentor in a gout of flames and leaving him for dead. His mission complete, Snake hands off the Oilix formula to Roy Campbell before retiring to Alaska, finally free from the battlefield. Shadow Moses Incident, 2005. But of course, the American government isn't having any of that, and in 2005, Snake is called to action by his former commander, Roy Campbell. To coerce him into helping, Campbell sends armed soldiers after Snake and has his personal effects confiscated. Snake begrudgingly agrees to help, but under the condition that he only be given orders from Campbell and that he be told all his mission information from the outset. Rogue members of Foxhound have staged a rebellion on Shadow Moses Island, threatening the US with a nuclear strike. They are demanding the remains of Big Boss be turned over to them, along with one billion dollars. To avoid being confused with Liquid Snake, and keep in mind, they don't really know that they're clones yet, Solid Snake chops off his hair and gets that iconic short mullet that we all know and love. Solid Snake's goals for the mission are simple. Ascertain the Rebels' nuclear capabilities and rescue their two hostages. DARPA Chief Donald Anderson, aka Sigint from the Snake Eater days, and weapons manufacturer Kenneth Baker. Snake infiltrates Shadow Moses and goes on to attempt to rescue Donald Anderson from his cell. Anderson reveals plans for a new Metal Gear at the facility, and before Snake can rescue him, dies in front of Snake. Snake escapes the cell with help from Foxhound recruit Meryl Silverberg, who is also Campbell's niece. She knocks out the guard patrolling the cells, who we as players know is Johnny Sasaki, and unlocks the cell door for Snake. Snake then moves on to his next target, Kenneth Baker. He finds Baker imprisoned within a web of C4, thanks to Revolver Ocelot, and yes, the exact same Ocelot who served Big Boss throughout the years. Snake battles Ocelot and wins, and Ocelot's hand is sliced off thanks to a rogue agent among the rogue agents. Snake's ally turned enemy, Gray Fox. Later, Snake quickly gets some help from Hal Otacon Emmerich, the scientist who designed Metal Gear Rex. Along his way to Liquid, Snake battles the top dogs of Foxhound, including Vulcan Raven, Psychomantis, and Sniper Wolf. Eventually, Liquid tricks Snake into activating Metal Gear Rex by impersonating Master Miller over Kodak after killing him. Ultimately, Snake prevails as he stops Metal Gear Rex, with some help from Gray Fox. During the two clones' final battle, Liquid taunts Snake by telling him that he's killed many of his brothers in the Next Generation Special Forces, who has also been experimented on with Big Boss's genes. But Snake has the last laugh when Liquid succumbs to the Fox Die virus after they both escape Shadow Moses. See, Fox Die was a central part of the Shadow Moses incident all along. Snake learns that he's a host of Fox Die. It's a a virus designed by Dr. Naomi Hunter. The Pentagon wanted him to pass it on to Kenneth Baker, who the government wanted dead for knowing too much about the conspiracy, and also to the Foxhound operatives. To further unsettle him, Solid Snake is reminded that he subconsciously might have returned to the battlefield because he actually enjoys war. Meryl, Psycho Mantis, and Liquid Snake all said that to him. And, uh, hey, even Big Boss told him that during their showdown in Zanzibar Land. Snake had a feeling that Campbell had been concealing information from him throughout his mission, but forgives him because the Pentagon had used his niece Meryl as leverage. See, she was sent to Shadow Moses before the incident to make him cooperate. Perhaps the most far-reaching result of the Shadow Moses incident is the effect it would have on Snake's later life. Naomi designed his particular strain of the Fox Die virus to really make Snake hurt specifically. She believed that Snake had killed her brother Gray Fox back in Zanzibar land. So, as a form of revenge, Snake's strain of Fox Die makes him vulnerable at a random time, as opposed to, you know, a set decline. 
post Shadow Moses and the Tanker incident, 2006 to 2008. Solid Snake goes into hiding after the Shadow Moses incident. The sole survivor of Foxhound, Revolver Ocelot reports the event to US President George Sears, who's actually the third, genetically perfect clone, Solidus Snake. The Patriots placed Solidus into the presidency, and Ocelot was spying for the organization. He tells Solidus that the inferior clone, Solid, was the one who survived even though Liquid thought he was the inferior clone, and that Snake's Fox Die virus is going to activate soon. Also, in perhaps the weirdest occurrence in the series, and that's saying a lot, Ocelot transplants Liquid Snake's arm onto his own body after losing his own at Shadow Moses, leading to Liquid slowly taking over his consciousness, creating the combined persona of Liquid Ocelot, because, hey, that's how arms work. Three weeks after the incident, Naomi Hunter escapes her imprisonment. Liquid Ocelot's the one who breaks her out, but the government frames Solid Snake for it. But that's the least of Snake's troubles. Liquid Ocelot goes on to sell the plans for Metal Gear Rex on the black market, which prompts Snake and Otacon to create a non-government organization called Philanthropy. Its goal is to eliminate all Metal Gear-related technology by investigating its development across the world using Snake's infiltration skills. The organization then releases his findings to the public. During one of his missions, Solid Snake finds Liquid Snake's corpse in cold storage. In 2007, Solid Snake and Otacon find out through Otacon's stepsister, Emma Emmerich, that the new amphibious Metal Gear called Metal Gear Ray is being transported to the US on a disguised oil tanker. Now, Snake has a new mission. Infiltrate the tanker and get footage of Metal Gear Ray to prove its existence to the world. After Snake arrives on the ship, the tanker is taken over by a Russian military force led by Sergei Gerlukovich. Solid Snake fights and non-lethally subdues Gerlukovich's daughter, Olga. Although he's able to get photographic evidence of Metal Gear Ray, neither Snake nor Otacon are able to predict the triumphant reappearance of Revolver Ocelot on the tanker, who detonates a number of explosives in order to sink the boat. In fighting off Ocelot, Snake is confronted by Liquid, who was starting to take over Ocelot's mind. Liquid Ocelot is able to steal Metal Gear Ray and escape the tanker in it. Snake also escapes the tanker and is rescued by Otacon on a small boat. The two of them proceed to rescue Olga and fake Snake's death using the original Liquid Snake's corpse, which we discovered earlier. But once again, that isn't the end of it. A US Army cipher takes its own photographs of the tanker incident, which the Patriots used to frame Solid Snake, again, and the philanthropy organization, both exposing them to the public and destroying their reputation. The media, manipulated by the Patriots, reports that Solid Snake had led the terrorists take over the tanker, the Navy dispatched the Marines to get rid of the threat, and that Snake sunk the tanker and killed everybody, including himself. At least his attempt to fake his death actually works. The cleanup of the incident allows the Patriots to cover up the construction of Arsenal Gear, a massive, moving, submersible fortress capable of controlling internet transmissions, as well as launching nuclear weapons through control of the military's tactical network. These abilities would allow Arsenal Gear to wage war on both physical and informational battlefields. Philanthropy does come out on top in one way. At least one website is convinced of the existence of Metal Gear Ray. Despite being discredited by the mainstream media, Snake and Otacon's mission wasn't totally a failure. Big Shell Incident and the Sons of Liberty, 2009 to 2011. Fast forward two years to April of 2009, Solid Snake receives intel that a militant organization called the Sons of Liberty have taken over the Big Shell offshore decontamination facility. The organization is a combination of Russian mercenaries and a rogue counter-terrorist unit called Dead Cell, consisting of members Vamp, Fortune, and Fat Man. They've taken multiple hostages, including the US president, James Johnson. The tanker incident had leaked tons of crude oil into the ocean, and the government claimed to have built Big Shell to facilitate the cleanup. But in reality, Big Shell is actually the development site of a new Metal Gear, Arsenal Gear to be exact. By this point, Snake had been in hiding for two years, and he feels like that was long enough. So he decides to infiltrate Big Shell to save the hostages, rescue the US president, and prevent the Sons of Liberty from blowing up the place. Snake is able to knock out several sentries and ascend to the roof, but is noticed by Raiden. Foxhound recruit who infiltrated the facility after Snake. To avoid being outed, Snake introduces himself as Iroquois Pliskin, a Navy SEAL with a totally believable and not at all made up name. Snake as Pliskin helps Raiden throughout his mission, though he raises Raiden's suspicions of his real identity a few times. The two soldiers split up and Pliskin continues watching Raiden from afar. Pliskin's headphones and use of certain military mottos clues bomb disposal expert Peter Stillman into the fact that he wasn't really a SEAL. He also uses a cardboard box to hide in at one point, further raising the suspicions of Stillman and Raiden. Pliskin goes on to investigate Shell 2 of the facility on Stillman's request and finds a large cache of explosives planted by Fat Man. When he disarms the decoy explosives, Pliskin accidentally activates the bombs. Disturbed by the further activation of bombs, Stillman goes to Strut 8 to investigate, only to discover a bomb that couldn't be deactivated. After warning Pliskin and Raiden of Fat Man's intentions, the bomb explodes, killing Stillman. The resulting boom knocks Pliskin out, but he survives the blast with Otacon's help. Using a tip from Raiden, Pliskin 
Pliskin investigates Shell 2 and hijacks a helicopter for Otacon to pilot. Raiden and Pliskin continue working together, even as Raiden begins to doubt Pliskin's identity. The two soldiers are attacked by the leader of the Sons of Liberty, Snake's genetic brother, Solidus Snake, aka George Sears. Solidus has been claiming he's Solid Snake the whole time, and Pliskin angrily insists he isn't. When Raiden overhears Solidus use Pliskin's real name, the real Solid Snake finally reveals his true identity and mission to Raiden. Snake encounters Olga Gurlukovich and explains to her that Ocelot killed her father, Sergei, not him. Meanwhile, Raiden finds President Johnson, who tells him that the Patriots have handpicked and controlled every US president for generations. He also tells him the truth about Solidus. He is the aforementioned perfect third clone of Big Boss, who went rogue with Dead Cell to escape the Patriots' control. Right after this revelation, just to make things difficult, Ocelot assassinates the President. Snake then helps Raiden protect Emma as she heads towards Shell 1, but Vamp suddenly appears and mortally wounds Emma. Snake runs to Emma's aid and carries her back. At Shell 1, Snake, Raiden, Otacon, and Emma install a computer virus into Arsenal Gear's AI, and right afterwards, Emma succumbs to the wound inflicted by Vamp. After a handshake of true bromance. To help give Otacon some confidence, Snake seemingly betrays Raiden using Olga's help. This gives Raiden access to Arsenal gear to get a hold of a disc containing the identities of the Patriots. Together, Snake and Raiden fight their way through an army of enemy soldiers. Snake is captured by one of the leading members of Dead Cell, Fortune. On top of Arsenal gear, Ocelot confronts Solid Snake, Fortune, Raiden, and Solidus Snake and reveals his true colors as an agent of the Patriots. Just then, his transplanted right arm takes over and Liquid Snake's consciousness possesses him. And then, Liquid Ocelot tells him that the whole Big Shell fiasco was just a ploy to lure Snake to him so Snake could take over Ocelot and then set off Metal Gear Ray to kill the Patriots. Solid Snake isn't able to stop Metal Gear Ray from getting away, but he does put a tracker on it. After Raiden defeats Solidus in a sword fight, Snake explains to him that his plan was to find the Patriots, and that the disc that Raiden had been given was a decoy. He graciously refuses Raiden's help with the philanthropy organization because he doesn't want to place Raiden or Olga's daughter in any further danger. After the Big Shell incident, Solid Snake's body starts rapidly aging, and no doctors can diagnose why. Players know it's because of his faulty clone genes. Snake had made a promise to Raiden to rescue Olga's daughter, Sunny, from the Patriots but by 2011, he isn't able to do so. And instead, Raiden anonymously delivers her to Snake's care. The guns of the Patriots incident and the end of Solid Snake, 2014. By 2014, Otacon and Snake's other doctors have told him that he has, at best, a year to live. This is when Snake resurfaces to the military world as Old Snake. The world is entirely controlled by private military companies manned by nanomachine-enhanced soldiers, and the largest conglomerate of PMCs is headed by Liquid Ocelot. He is leading a new version of Outer Heaven, which is the mother company to five of the biggest PMCs. With so much power in his hands, Liquid is a hair's breadth from world domination. This crisis brings Old Snake out of retirement. He's dispatched to the Middle East as a favor to Campbell to assassinate Liquid Ocelot, with inspecting PMCs as his cover story. Once again, he works alongside his old friend, Otacon. Old Snake infiltrates Liquid's PMC headquarters base by disguising himself as a militia instructor. His initial attempt to assassinate Liquid fails, but he does learn that Dr. Naomi Hunter is being held captive. After being rescued, Naomi tells Snake that the fox dye virus in his body has started to mutate, and if he doesn't die soon, it'll spread, causing a pandemic. She also tells him that Liquid's goal is to obtain the body of Big Boss and use it to access the Patriot's master network using GW, the AI from Arsenal Gear, which he repurposed for his own nefarious gains. The technological system is controlled by biological means, which means that having access to Boss's genes lets Liquid Ocelot control all nanomachines, and therefore, all PMCs. Liquid is able to get a hold of Big Boss's corpse and shuts down every PMC other than his own. From there, he plans to destroy JD, the Patriot's main AI, and use GW to usurp domination of the world from the Patriots. To do this, though, he needs a nuclear weapon that isn't locked by the Patriot's nanomachines. Snake and friends deduce that the only such weapon in the world is the railgun of Metal Gear Rex, which remains on Shadow Moses Island. Old Snake gets to Rex, but not before Liquid steals the railgun. Liquid escapes to Outer Haven, not Heaven, Haven, his own massive submersible battleship, and attempts to crush Snake by running him over with it. Snake is rescued by Raiden, who uses his cyborg strength to stop the ship, losing both arms in the process. Oh yeah, Raiden's a uh, breakdancing cyborg now. Now, Snake is united with all his friends to oppose Liquid. He's got Raiden, hardened badass Merrill, and classic pants pooper, Johnny Sasaki. The team sneaks aboard Outer Haven to stop GW before it can launch the nuke. Snake's able to halt the launch of the railgun by using a new computer virus. This new virus, Fox Alive, was made by Naomi Hunter with some help from Sunny, and Snake uses it to control the system. Unbeknownst to everyone, Sunny had secretly programmed Fox Alive to destroy JD, the Patriot system, as well as the AIs and nanomachines. But then, 
a plot twist. Liquid Ocelot reveals that the new virus was his plan all along because he wanted to fulfill Big Boss's dream, a world where soldiers can be free. Ocelot and Old Snake engage in one final geriatric duel, and afterwards, Ocelot succumbs to the strain and stress and dies. Also, turns out that Ocelot was never actually possessed by the spirit of Liquid. He just acted as if he was to fool the Patriots, effectively transplanting Liquid's personality onto himself using drugs, nanomachines, psychotherapy, and hypnosis. Ko Kojima, come on, why are you doing this? By this point, Old Snake is at the end of his rope, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. He visits the false grave of Big Boss, and knowing he must die to stop the oncoming plague festering within him, he attempts to commit suicide. However, he is unable to bring himself to pull the trigger. He's then interrupted by Big Boss, accompanied by the paralyzed Major Zero. That's right, Big Boss is still alive. He explains everything to Old Snake, telling him that Major Zero allowed the AI to take over control of the Patriots and therefore forced the world to be dependent on war economy. He also tells him that he was injected with a second strain of fox dye, one designed to kill Big Boss, along with Ocelot and Snake's mother, Eva. But there's an upside. The new virus replaces the old virus, which means that Snake's fox dye is no longer mutating and that it'll no longer spread. Snake gets to live! So Snake and Big Boss reconcile, and after Big Boss turns off Major Zero's oxygen supply, thus killing the last of the Patriots, Boss dies in his clone son's arms from the Fox Die virus. His last words to Snake urge him to live his life to the fullest. Not as a snake, but as a man. The advice hits home, and Snake chooses to quit smoking and resolves to live the rest of his life in peace, hoping to see the new and more peaceful world he's helped create. I've been your host Marcus, and what better way to end the Metal Gear timeline than with Solid Snake himself, David Hayter. Thanks, David. And so concludes the insane saga of Solid Snake and Metal Gear. As bizarre as this story gets, Metal Gear is a series near and dear to my heart. Love truly can bloom on the battlefield. I'm David Hayter with The Leaderboard. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to The Leaderboard. And if you're still hungry for more stories about stealthy super soldiers, walking robots, and villains with crazy code names, take a look at our first Metal Gear timeline. It covers the rise of the Patriots, Big Boss, basically everything you'd need to know before watching this one. I'm Solid Snake. Thank you for listening. Snake out.